My name is Nathan Radcliffe. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in New York City. I am an associate professor of ophthalmology at Mount Sinai School of Medicine, and I'm also a busy cataract and glaucoma surgeon at the New York Eye Surgery Center in the Bronx. We have a lot of different options for treating MIGS, and of course glaucoma comes in a range of severities and also in a range of disease velocities based on how controlled the pressure is. I think one of the misconceptions with MIGS is that you might want to use a lighter treatment for very mild disease and maybe a more aggressive or larger stent for more moderate disease. That's not the case at all. And in fact, we know from our clinical data, particularly from the Hydrus two and three year data that has been published, that the likelihood of needing a big incisional glaucoma surgery isn't based on how mild or moderate it is at baseline. It's unpredictable. So if I have a mild glaucoma patient, I don't know if they're gonna become moderate, severe, and need surgery within even a few years. So I wanna take my one opportunity at the time of cataract surgery, make the most of it, and use the stent that has the most robust and most uh, you know, well-documented efficacy and durability that I have. This is Nathan Radcliffe, and I'm demonstrating my surgical technique for the hydrus. I've completed a cataract surgery, uh, including the creation of the hydrus incision, which for me is a one millimeter incision uh, that is parallel to my main wound um, and uh, to the right of the main wound. This is a right eye, so it's inferior to the main wound. And uh, I'm getting set up here. I've got my gonioscopic visualization all set up, uh, moving a little viscoelastic around on the cornea, entering uh, through the hydrus incision and the hydrus incision really gives you access so you don't have to come in and approach the canal at an awkward angle. Uh, and so the first thing I'm going to do actually is use my um, hydrus um, inserter to make a small incision uh, or goniotomy in the trabecular meshwork and this is just to allow me uh, access uh, to the canal and uh, here I am making that small uh, incision. And now I can actually get the inserter into the, the canal of Schlem through the trabecular meshwork. And notice that I'm tilting up about 15 degrees so I can have the, uh, what the hydrus itself is gonna basically use the scleral shelf as a guide to come into the canal. And you see it goes in very smoothly. Uh, and here we are, we have a nice uh, placement. Uh, I think this is excellent as it is. You'll see I'm going to make a few manipulations, but for right now I'm just getting you a, a sort of an oblique view with a gonioscopic lens, and you can see we're in the canal. You can see all the windows there through the uh, canal schlem. Uh, I moved the uh, inserter around, so I found I can, in some cases, can use the uh, hydrus inserter just to push my implant in a little bit more. Uh, this is really fine placement, but as you can see, I nudged it in um, just, just the slightest amount more uh, to kind of get things tucked away there to a place where I'm really happy with the position of the hydrus. And uh, if this is uncomfortable, sometimes I'll ask for uh, a Sinsky hook uh, or a Kuglin hook. Uh, the Kuglin, I think, has the best purchase, but uh, the Sinsky can work very nicely as well. Again, this is Nathan Radcliffe demonstrating my technique for the hydrus placement with the hydrus incision.